In 2004, we were at the top of the mountain. A deep walk with God, a beautiful family, living an amazing home, earning a very, very large salary as an expat, international banker, and then it all changed. Over the space of eight years, our precious 17-year-old son, Alex, committed suicide, and our beautiful 32-year-old daughter, Rebecca, drowned in a tragic accident. Two of my three siblings also died, as did Jeannie's 13-year-old nephew. Some people call us a modern-day Job, and quite honestly, the sorrow and suffering that we've endured through this time has been unbelievable. On that cold, dark night, when um, I heard the door knock, and there stood the policeman. In that moment, when you hear those words, any parent, the anguish in their heart, it was though the cords of death had entangled me, and the anguish of the grave came upon me. Hmm. Rebecca always had such a sweet heart. She was beautiful on the outside, but more importantly, she was... She had a beautiful heart. Beautiful heart. Yeah. 32 years old, incredibly talented, brilliant athlete. She'd gone down to try and cool off by Lake Michigan. She fell into the lake and she couldn't get out where she'd fallen in. She was overcome with hypothermia and she drowned. <laughs> It's, it's very hard to explain the agony and the pain of the loss of a child. Suicide adds another dimension because you have the whole issue of blame. If only, why did we do this? Why didn't we see it? All of these things come in and of course you rewind it and rewind it and rewind it. The statistics show that, that it can be as high as 19 out of 20 marriages fail after the suicide of a child. Jeannie particularly, she went into this, this terrible shock and, and darkness. Yeah. She would blame herself, she would blame me. She'd lost at this stage faith in God. Mm. So I'd come home at night and the weekends and it would just, just come out, this pain would come out, you know, accusation and this hatred, hatred for herself, hatred for me. I started to call them seasons of grieving and you would come out of one season to come into another season, and it just progressively got darker and darker. Yeah. Which ultimately ran into our marriage. Yes. This whole issue of suffering is huge. It's the one of, one of the main reasons that people don't believe in God, is if it's a loving God, how can he allow all this suffering in the world? One of the main reasons people lose their faith is because of suffering. And of course we've experienced the deepest of sorrow and suffering now and I believe through this God has given us a real insight to this whole topic. And you know, scripture teaches that suffering is not something that God wants at all, it's something he hates in fact. Spirit, lead me where my trust is with We'd sit in the garden from morning till night like a statue. On one particular day I crept up to my bedroom and I decided I am not coming out of this bedroom. But when I went in the room, the room filled with light and love that I had never experienced. And I wanted to stay in that place forever. And in that place, words came to my heart and mind that my grief was not my own. And that in that place, I wanted to please my Heavenly Father because in that place, I saw how He filled every area and how small my grief was 
in comparison to him in eternity. And from that moment, I just wanted to be his pleasing daughter, mm. for him to say, well done, good and faithful servant. When we were in the most, in the darkest of dark places, the most painful time, I know there's grace there where you can cry out to God and say, God, would you come with your love and with your light and bring restoration into this marriage? What we have today is richer and deeper than could be imaginable. And I love this beautiful girl with all of my heart. And I'm so grateful for her. And we're now bonded in every which way you can imagine. The backdrop is heaven. And Jesus said the joy set before him, he endured the cross. And that's where our eyes are now. We fix our eyes not on the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. Because the things that are seen are temporary, but the unseen things are eternal. And we know, we don't think it's long, we will all meet up again. We're going to give Jesus a hug first, and then over his shoulder we're going to see Rebecca and Alex, and our other loved ones, my brother and sister, my dad, and Jean's nephew. Well, they're, they're all there waiting, grandparents, they're all there waiting. And that's the backdrop of how we live now. It says in Colossians now, since then you've been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Jesus is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. We now realize that God is calling us to share the deep things he's put into our hearts of his unfailing love, his calling on all of our lives, and to comfort others with the comfort that we ourselves have received, to his honour and to his glory.